Welcome back, everyone. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Am, Joe, my co-host, Stu Miniman from wikibon.org. And Stu, um, you know, Dave couldn't make it here, um, and I'm bummed because there's a lot of cloud action, but you know, you're the chief analyst on the cloud, so uh, I want to get your take first on um, what's going on at the event. I want, and, then, and then I want to go through the news because there's a lot of news that happened um, that we want to cover. So first, what's your take on the event and the day we just had in front of us? Yeah, John, so you know, it was great to be here. 10th anniversary, a lot of buzz uh, at the show. You know, always a good community and uh, you know, definitely you know, a, just a great warm vibe uh, from the Red Hat people. Um, you know, we just talked to Paul Cormier and talked about you know, the difference between you know, really being open source and you know, being quasi open source. Um, you know, Jim Whitehurst, I thought that was a you know, great discussion. You know, CEO of the company, you know, the, the, the first billion dollar open source company. Uh, he said he has dinner a couple of times a year with the other open source companies. Uh, so, you know, a, a, a company that is really uh, about, you know, building, you know, value to the community, delivering, uh, you know, value to companies and, and helping to, you know, expand the future of software. Uh, you talked about cloud. This is, you know, obviously a very important piece of cloud. You know, Linux is everywhere. And open source becomes you know, more and more important as time goes on. You know, Stu, we had the top executives come on theCUBE, as always, great, uh, great for us to have the kind of uh, uh, interactions with the CEO, the presidents, and the GMs of the divisions. Uh, OpenShift, Platform Group, the CEO, we had uh, the CTO of Cisco on, uh, just luminaries in this field, okay? So, well, what's interesting is, the big deal is DevOps. And this is not new to us in our audience who follow the Cube. DevOps is huge. What I found interesting is some of the commentary around the Red Hat guys who look at JBoss and Linux, kind of the convergence. Linux was the ops and JBoss was the dev. That essentially became the kernel of a DevOps movement, which began, began many, many years ago, Stu. So now since has, uh, has, has come up there, big market opportunity, a lot of core competence around open source with Red Hat, a lot of differentiation now with the cloud. So you have, Two big things in my mind coming out of today, and, and, and this also talks to some of the news from Red Hat, is open source is now fully commercialized as a tier one uh, front runner at platform for all the software innovations. Okay, and two, the disruption behind that is the combustion engine, the steam engine, the printing press, whatever metaphor you want to use, this is an industrial revolution-like shift. So at the heart of this is virtualization, and now the big news here, this notion of containers. So one, I want to get your take on that, the trends I just mentioned, and virtualization embedded in Linux, and now containers in the cloud. Do you agree with that? Yeah, so, so, so John, first of all, it's an interesting change in the discussion. You know, you think back to the early days, you know, Linux was to get people off of proprietary Unix. Then for many years, it was kind of, you know, Linux open source versus proprietary Microsoft. And now they got up this morning and said, you know, that there's basically two main operating systems in the enterprise today. It's Windows and Linux. And the, the enemy, uh, in, in many ways is, you know, VMware and Pivotal comes up as, you know, those are the ones that they see as kind of threatening to the model, um, you know, quasi open source. Uh, it's not virtualization that's built into the operating system. Uh, so, you know, th those dynamics are, are kind of interesting uh, and, you know, definitely get, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the arguments in the marketplace as to which was the right way to build things. Um, as, as you brought up though, John, containers, I think, is the buzz of the show. Uh, getting to talk with the, the, the founder of Docker, uh, the big announcement here, and, uh, you know, I, I think containers is, uh, you know, it just a very important piece of allowing, you know, cloud to become reality. Yeah, and it's also, it's a prime time moment for a startup called Docker, which is, um, you know, we talked to the founder today, Solomon, um, Ben Golub, the uh, CEO experience, the tech executive, going back to the VeriSign days um, when I first met him. Um, and that's interesting. And also about Docker's is that's Jerry Chen's first investment. Now, Jerry Chen is a CUBE alumni, and it's probably one of the most important venture capitals in Silicon Valley right now. He's at one of the big top tier firms, Greylock. Um, they have partners like Reed Hoffman. They, they, they're just, just a really amazing firm. They're doing a lot of great deals. They invested in Cloudera, Dropbox, and you, you name them, they've invested in them. Um, but that's Jerry Chen's first investment. And we were watching Jerry Chen, who basically created vCloud at VMware. When he became a venture capitalist, it was, it was, it was like you know, that, that, that star baseball athlete. You know, when is he going to get his first hit? You know, he's, he's in the major leagues in the investment circles. And it's interesting, he was very much 
um, waiting to play the field, and it's always nervous to get that first hit under your belt. So this is Jerry Chen's first choice, an interesting one. He read the tea leaves, he saw around the corner, he sees the container, and really that's an application focus. So I wonder if that's a little bit of, he knows a little bit about what's going on with VMware, this is an alternative. What's your take on that? Yeah, yeah, John and Dunn, fascinating because you know we we watched uh, you know in 2010 when we went and saw uh, VMware and we were here in Moscone uh, and uh, for VMworld you looked at the the executive team of VMware was a bunch of former Microsoft guys and it looked like they were going to build their own application portfolio buying companies like Zimbra and Slide Rocket um, and. VMware's moved away from that. They, they've now got, uh, you know, Pivotal was spun out, uh, and in, in many ways they, they need to be, be able to create that foundation uh, and, and court the developers to build the next generation of applications rather than owning the, their own application today. And of course, Red Hat, as you said, uh, you know, is also trying to court those developers with what they've done with JBoss, with what they're doing with OpenShift. Uh, so, you know, you look at some of the big companies that ha have traditionally owned their own applications, uh, companies like IBM uh, who have uh, things like DB2 and they're building out over 100 SaaS models, uh, SaaS applications out there. Uh, companies like Oracle, obviously, you know, huge presence in the database market. Um, and then you have these companies that are building the foundation for these next generation of the, the cloud mobile social uh, environments. So we have a, a blog post up on, on, on a comment uh, I want to just share the headline, and that is, is that you know you got uh, uh, Padme uh, Warrior, CTO, entering a new internet era demands industry co-opetition. And I think that's the real story here, is that you heard about the movement to the cloud is highly competitive. We had um, obviously direct commentary on, on Cloud Foundry from the president of Red Hat talking about a quasi open source, trying to lock you in with an open core and proprietary uh, technology, where Cisco's taking a different approach. Cisco, Cisco understands unification. In fact, one of their UCS um, initiatives is about unification in a network layer. So you know, Cisco very much understands that unification, Stu. Also, they, they understand the elastic nature of the cloud, and they mentioned words like dynamic and agile, and that is really the phenomenon. And Cisco carries a lot of chops because Cisco, can be slower than some of the other companies, but they know their stuff, they kind of get it right. Technically, some, some say, some will argue that, but, but for the most part, they don't do a lot of grandstanding. So when you hear um, uh, Padre say, hey, unification, agile, elastic, I mean, she means it. So you got Cisco, you got IBM, all these guys are all here. Pretty big deal, Stu. Yeah, 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 great, great ecosystem. Uh, at the end of the day, when I look at Cisco, it's still about driving traffic over their core networks. Um, they, they have a very network-centric view of the world. And when they talk about the Internet of Things and cloud, it's about connecting uh, the pieces together. Um, what, what's been uh, really crystallized for me is when I look at Red Hat, um, you know, I mean, it's been a while now that they've been more than a Linux company, but there's definitely no way people can look at them and say, oh, they're, they're, they're primarily just Linux. They've got, uh, you know, there's great chops in the networking world. Uh, they, they are, you know, heavily active in, in cloud environments. Uh, and uh, as we heard for the, kind of the party line in these messages uh, at the show, it's physical, virtual, public and private, those, those four environments uh, that as CIOs try to figure out where their applications live, Red Hat's going to have a solution, it's going to be enterprise ready, uh, and they're going to help to drive that home and uh, you know, be in that next generation platform. So it's about the Internet of Things, it's about the cloud, it's about data, we heard a lot of commentary throughout the day, but the big news today really is about Red Hat laying out the announcement for Red Hat Enterprise Edition uh, 7 and the containers beyond it, and everything else kind of stew was wrappers around that message. So, announcements like innovation, some uh, reference studies, mission critical applications. So you got um, RHEL 7, okay? Red Hat Enterprise Edition 7, the containers around it, with the focus of applications. Tomorrow we're expecting to hear some things around OpenStack, and some announcements with other partnerships. So, interesting day one, setting the foundation, bringing all their heavy hitters to the cube, we loved it. The enterprise is their bread and butter. I mean, obviously, besides the open source communities where they do their work, they've been doing very, very well in the enterprise, 65% market share, and continue to have that mojo um, and extending on that lead as we talked about. Uh, and obviously, um, the containers is a big piece. So that's the news of the day, and just other, other kind of commentary um, on the revenue model. 
We heard them looking at potentially new things, but nothing, nothing that's going to be orthogonal to their core subscription model. We saw um, the application being king, OpenStack Pass with OpenShift. Um, you see the notion of Microsoft and DevOps kind of orbiting around their relationship with Amazon Web Services, but really you see, the, you see them differentiating around this open core strategy. Red Hat is old school and they want to be new school with the continuation of the open source business model and they're poo-pooing the open core models too. And it's all about Linux, OpenStack, and OpenShift. The big bet that, that I see here is it's OpenStack. I mean, everything, all the chips are on the table with OpenStack. Yeah, so John, you know, we haven't talked about Amazon too much. We, we, you know, Amazon is a sponsor here, they're a partner of Red Hat, but you know, it's really clear that Red Hat is going to support all environments. Uh, I, I think if you were to, you know, in a closed door session, uh, you know, ask some Red Hat people if they would prefer uh, if, you know, OpenStack or Google uh, was to gain some share against Red Hat, they'd probably be interested in that. Uh, but for the time being, you know, Red Hat supported really across all environments, um, you know, so companies doing, uh, you know, uh, Amazon are going to be able to do uh, Red Hat, and Red Hat's giving customers options to be able to move around uh, so that, you know, Amazon does not become a lock-in environment. Paul Comier said it best, their core focus is open source innovation, continuing to extend that business model around four major pillars, physical, virtual, private, and public, wrapping around the open source. Dude, that seems to be the thing. The competitive landscape, uh, it's still some of the same for Red Hat. Obviously, Cloud Foundry and the alternative cloud approaches seem to be the big thing. And with virtualization and containers really becoming the, the technology elements that seem to be the battleground. And all the stuff in between, orchestration, software, all those, the white spaces around those key things, all pointing to one thing, that is the developer. The developers are the focus. Whoever can bring the mojo and the magic and the greatness of, of value creation, the developers will win. And I think Red Hat's very poised. Yeah, and John, it's it's impressive to see kind of the culture here. Uh, you know, Jim Whitehurst, you know, very laid back. Uh, you know, when he's not doing all of his traveling, he's splitting his time between kind of the home office in uh, North Carolina, and, and obviously he's here in the Valley a lot. Um, but, you know, they're not a aggressive competitive company uh, when it comes to, you know, trying to knock the competition or, you know, take over a market. Uh, it, it's very much about, you know, working with customers, working with the ecosystem. Red Hat's a company that the community helped build and their future relies on still working with that community, both partner ecosystems and uh, a, a ever-growing uh, group of developers that are going to code uh, with them. The big thing was uh, I wanted to get on the table that was kind of kicked around, not necessarily formed an opinion on yet, but the role of data. You know, DevOps is really a cloud and infrastructure thing. When you start thinking about the role of data, I still think there's a dev data analytics angle here that's going to look like DevOps kind of where DevOps started, I think I'm starting to see that now, Stu, and all the top computer scientists like Paul Comier and others in the systems architecture world have to really think carefully around data first as an application component of, for the developer. Developing with data as a primary asset, latency, getting access, enabling that up and down the stack will be key. So, Great day, it's about the cloud, it's about Red Hat uh, Enterprise Edition, it's about the containers. Tomorrow we'll hear about Cloud Foundry, we'll drill down uh, from some top co companies as well that are partnering, the partner announcements. Uh, this is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman from Wikibon, filling in for Dave Vellante who's out back east uh, this week. Uh, and as always, we always have Jeff Frick available, Jeff Kelly's in the house. Uh, we have a stable of analysts uh, always on call here, Wikibon doing a great job, and the SiliconANGLE team's doing a great, great, great work here, and all the folks back at the ranch. So, thanks for watching and come back tomorrow and stay with us for day two coverage all day tomorrow. Uh, and we're here live with theCUBE in San Francisco all day tomorrow. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow.